Hey everybody, it's Tuesday. You know what that means. It's my NFL opening line report where I give you candid comments, initial reactions to the opening lines and some what I think leans are out of the gate, some things to look for. These are not handicap picks and this is user friendly, which means you leave comments in the comments section and I go in the back end. And I read the comments and approve the ones that leave out the F-bombs and the links to porn sites and other handicapping sites that are putting the, their links to the super lock of the century page. And uh, once we filter through those, those of you that have, uh, you know, positive comments, your picks, your questions, whatever, um, we'll post them and I'll interact throughout the week. We get hundreds and hundreds of comments I can't go through every single one of them. We have to handicap this week's action. Looking forward to the NFL. Six and one, my last seven sides and totals. The teasers have not treated me well. Um, we'll work on that. Missed both of them by half a point this week. Damn it. And I was taking dogs. Uh, but an interesting week in the NFL. A lot of surprises. Uh, Denver, big surprise. Carolina, huge surprise. Uh more so that uh, Vegas didn't bother to get off the bus. They acted like they didn't have a game to play. I mean, they made Andy Dalton look like Joe Montana. Uh, the demise of the Jacksonville Jaguars continues to spiral downward as they uh, looked unprepared and poorly coached to play a game last night. And Buffalo jumped all over them. Um, the Cincinnati Bungles go down. They took out almost 700 guys. Last night in the Circa Survivor Pool. The Survivor Pool, you know what? We're going to go out to Vegas. We're going to get in this $14 million contest for $1,000. All we got to do is pick one winner. We can't use the team ever again. It's a suicide pool. It's a last man standing deal. You know, all we got to do is pick a game. Just a winner. No big deal. No spread involved. Easy. I don't know why guys like Tony are on video, you know, saying how hard the NFL is to handicap. All they got to do is pick a game, right? There were over 14,000 guys in that tournament. I was one of them. There is roughly about 2,500 left after three weeks. Think it's easy? Wow. Wow. There you go. So, uh, nonetheless, uh, we had uh, the over in the Jacksonville-Buffalo game last night for a premium play. And we gave you a player prop in the uh, Washington and Cincinnati game, which cashed. And also leaned Washington in that game. What's Cincinnati doing laying that number? I mean... To Jaden Daniels coming out party last night. Highest completion percentage by a rookie in any game ever in the history of the NFL. Over 20 passes. 91%. Two touchdown passes, no picks. He reminds me a lot of C.J. Stroud. He doesn't turn it over for a young guy. Doesn't turn it over. Takes off running. Um, need to put on some weight. He doesn't like to slide, which is going to hurt him. Because he's a he's kind of a frail thing uh, in terms of body weight and stature. But uh, they got themselves a good football team there. Yeah. The number six ranked offense in the NFL. Showed last night. Probably going to be rated higher than that after last night. Good balance to their attack. Quinn's a good coach. You know, uh, obviously, um, Kingsbury is a better offensive coordinator than he is a head coach for him. But nonetheless, yeah, some interesting results. I haven't seen these lines. I know what the Kansas City line is, obviously. Uh, but I really haven't looked at any of these lines. So these are the first time I've seen them. Here we go. Let's, let's, let's get it going. Let me pull up your live lines. We have a Thursday night game here between Dallas. Opened up as a five-point favorite, 43-and-a-half. 
at the Giants, uh, my top pick, down to four and a half. My top and total 44. Um, my top pick this last weekend was the Ravens. Um, Dallas can't stop anybody running the ball. Singletary for Giants probably going to have a uh, big day. Be looking at that player prop in that one. Mm. I can only lean Dallas. Uh, New York. I mean, Cleveland played like crap in that game and still had a chance to, uh, with the ball at the end of the game, to go tie it or win it. Uh, Giants aren't all that. Uh, Denver taking on the Jets, laying seven. Denver with a big statement win. They're going to have a lot more trouble with New York's defense than they uh, were with Tampa Bay. And Tampa Bay really wasn't dialed in to play that game. Jets added time to prepare. Put Jets in a teaser, get them down to minus one. Denver's not going to win back-to-back on the road. But I'm not going to lay seven. Because I don't think the Jets' offense is gelling at all. Once they get it together and get going, maybe. But, you know, sitting at 2-1, and one, I get it. Everybody's excited. But, you know, Denver made a point last week. That's a good Tampa Bay team they beat. But I'd tease the Jets down. Uh, Cincinnati on the road at Carolina, minus 4.5. Total 47 and a half. Uh, give me the over. What do you think on that side? Okay, Carolina, one hit wonder here with Andy Dalton. I mean, the Raiders never got off the bus in that game. I watched some of it. Yeah. Now, I'm not sold on Carolina just because of that win, but Cincinnati, uh, they're desperate for a win. Just because a team's desperate for a win doesn't mean necessarily they're going to get it. Philadelphia on the road. uh, Sloppy game again against New Orleans. We're able to win it. Uh, Tampa Bay uh, got their butt whipped at home against Denver. They're catching two and a half. Uh, Over and under is 45. Back-to-back roadies. Mm. Let's look at that one. What do you guys think about this one? Tampa Bay in a teaser up to eight and a half. Everybody's going to fade them because they just got blown out. And you know this. Philadelphia has only covered, dating back to last year, you know, two out of their last ten. Now, they've covered, they covered against Green Bay. They lost against Atlanta uh, a, a straight up and against the spread in a debacle on Monday night. And then New Orleans was just a sloppy game all the way around. Tampa is a cover machine. Seven and three, their last ten dating back to last year. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Tampa win that guy. I, I'd lean Tampa, definitely in a teaser. Uh, Rams at Chicago. Uh, Rams are uh, catching three, forty-one. Uh, give me the Rams. Chicago ranking dead last about every offensive category there is in the NFL. It's not working right now with Caleb Williams. They got weapons all over the place. Their offensive coordinators calling bad plays. Their game plan stinks. They got beat by a team that didn't play that well offensively. Still got beat. Rams pulled off a big upset against San Francisco. Sean McVay, coach of the week. Um, They were playing with a downgraded roster, much like San Francisco was. But L.A., I thought McVay last year and so far this year has coached about as good as any coach in the NFL. Um, I don't trust Chicago. 
Over under 41, might want to sniff the under there too. I definitely, definitely be using the Rams in a teaser. That needs to be a solid te teaser leg. You're getting through three, through six, through seven, almost to 10. That line's going to drop during the week. Atlanta against New Orleans. Atlanta at home. Laying a point and a half, the divisional game, 42 and a half is a total. Land off a tough game against my Chiefs. Yeah, they didn't call the pass interference in the end zone. Get over it. There's bad calls all over the place in the NFL. They're just not specific to Kansas City. For, you, for those of you Kansas City haters out there. Um, tell you that's a coin flip game there. That's a coin flip game. That's a coin flip game. That's going to be a tough game. Under 42 and a half. Jacksonville at Houston. Houston laying six. There's a tease. Well, you could tease, I'd tease, it looks too easy to take Houston. I'd take Jacksonville in a teaser, 45's a total. Jacksonville's offense is broken. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with them. And Houston just got throttled, throttled at Minnesota. I put, I put, I put them out as a free play. Houston, they got throttled. Minnesota's better than advertised. I want nothing to do with this game, actually. Nothing. I, I, I don't know what... I mean, Jacksonville couldn't do anything against Buffalo. I mean, they gave up 47 points. Their offense stinks. Houston can run the ball. They can throw it. They got receivers everywhere. They're going to be pissed off after that absolute shellacking they took up in Minnesota. Want to know the status of Mixon for this game, too, before you start getting too excited about Houston? I mean, there's going to be ugly covers every week. This could be one of them. Jacksonville desperate. That doesn't mean they're going to win, but that means they might actually try and get off the bus and be prepared for a game if Peterson wants to keep his job. Jacksonville was projected to be a playoff team this year and contend for the division, and they haven't won a game yet. And they've looked ugly in every game, especially Monday night. And it's a short week and travel again. All that benefits Houston, but it looks too easy. Green Bay uh, at home, big win over Tennessee. Malik Willis returns back to the team that drafted him, puts it to him. Uh, Tennessee, again, could be 3-0. and out. Their quarterback is killing them. Minnesota, the most impressive team uh, to me so far uh, in the NFL with, with uh, Darnold, the quarterback. Uh, Jefferson, not hurt, healthy. They're catching two and a half. 43 and a half. Definitely, there's your teaser of the month. Minnesota along with LA Rams. I mean, Minnesota throttled their last two. I, I, hang on. That line just moved to, is that three? Just moved to three in a spot. People pounding Green Bay. Wow. Live odds ticker just popped up. 43 and a half is a total. I definitely use the Vikings in a teaser. I don't know the status of Love in this game. That's going to be crucial. If Love doesn't play, I'll definitely be taking Minnesota in that one. I'm a believer. Pittsburgh at Indy. Pitt minus two. Total 40. Uh, one of the unbeatens in the, the NFL. Their defense is number one in the NFL. Uh, I will take Pittsburgh there. 
period. Uh, New England getting 10 at San Francisco. Total 39 and a half. Wow. What's San Francisco doing laying 10 to anybody with their injury list and they're all banged up? They're banged up. I, I, I lean Patriots. I know it's ugly. Hold your nose. Hold your nose. Give me the pats. Purdy's even banged up. Need to take a look at that injury list for San Francisco. Washington getting four. At Arizona, total 50 and a half. Give me the over. Kansas City, ah, that might be too many for Arizona, too. I'm not going to get on the Washington bandwagon yet. The Bungles have just, they took every, they took over a third of the field out in the Circus Survivor Contest between week one and week three. Um, Washington, pretty solid team. If you're a long-suffering Redskins fan, I'll have a cup of coffee on that one. If you're a long-suffering Washington fan, you got things to be excited about. A good young team. Zach Ertz is going to give them a lot of, uh, well, Arizona's changed their game plan since they got traded him out of there. But I would expect Connor, the best bet in that game, Arizona's running back to exceed his rushing total on a player prop. Because Washington can't stop anybody running the ball. Told you that on the free play last night. We took Zach Moss. Uh, they'll have a big day running the football. On second thought, thinking about this deeper, I take that under 50 and a half, actually. Because if Arizona's smart, I think their coach is smart. And the... <coughs> Pardon me. They play hard for that coach. They're going to run the rock. Murray will have a big day running the ball quarterback, too. Eating clock, moving chains. Take the under. Second thought. Chargers uh, getting eight against my Chiefs. Total 39. Chargers are beat up across the board. Kansas City down two through minus three. Kansas City doesn't cover big numbers. They don't cover big numbers. Now, Harbaugh, his whole thing in the preseason when he was hired, we got to beat Kansas City. We got to win this division. All roads go through KC. He'll have his team dialed in. But they just picked up Easton Stick, can't quarterback them. Who'd they get? They got, I can't remember right now. I'm having a brain fart. They just picked somebody. Heineke at quarterback may step in. Because he's a stick. Do you see him playing the preseason? Guy couldn't hit a bull in the ass. Handful of rocks. They couldn't even get a first down. Talk of preseason now. And they're coming off a real physical game against uh, Pittsburgh, who will just beat you up. T.J. Watt is a beast. Um, and that'll be, that's in L.A., so that'll be a pro-Kansas City crowd. If I, was in, if I was in Vegas right now instead of Kansas City, I split time between the two areas. I'd be at this game. Yeah, I'm not going to lay eight with them. Leave it alone. Tease them down, but I wouldn't lay eight. Um, and if anything, you you could go either way on the teaser. You could tease LA up to 14, or you could tease Kansas City down to two. I think both are probably attractive. Cleveland getting one. On the road at Las Vegas. Give me the Browns. Total 37 and a half. Buffalo at Baltimore. Here's a good game. 
This is the Sunday night game, too. Ravens minus two. 46 is the total. Baltimore is minus 135 on the money line. Buffalo played a perfect game. Josh Allen probably pay, played one of the best games of his career last night. Rarely do I agree with anything that anybody on ESPN says. What's his name? Orlovowski or whatever that guy's name is. He used to be a crappy backup quarterback in the NFL. Now, all of a sudden, he's the all saint savior to sports broadcasting. But he did make a statement that that was the best game he'd ever seen Josh Allen play. I would have to agree with him. That maybe it was his best game. Baltimore, better coach. They have a tendency to give it up late in the game. They almost, they were my seven-unit pick over Dallas this last weekend. I'd say that over 46 is more attractive than the side pick. Buffalo, again, good teaser leg there. Get them up to eight. Tennessee, my, oh, we got a doubleheader again on Monday night. Tennessee at Miami. Tennessee minus one, total 37. Uh, give me Tennessee. Miami can't do anything with that quarterback. Seattle at Detroit. Detroit minus four. Total 46 and a half. Give me the Lions. Seattle looked ugly. They won that game against Miami, but did you watch it? They played terrible. Those are my initial thoughts this week in the NFL. We'll have handicap games for you ready to go. I do see a top pick in this mix. Faux show. We are six and one, our last seven sides and totals. And we are gonna and we can't off a seven unit winner last week and a six unit winner the week before. We're gonna have another seven unit play on Sunday. Doc Sports is where I can be found. Baseball. Playoffs right around the corner. WNBA playoffs going on. NHL right around the corner, winning year last year. Not going to be long we're going to be talking NBA and college basketball. Okay, Prop markets. My prop bets in the NFL, 50-50 at best, something like that. I'm not happy. Not happy. I'm so unhappy that the guy I brought on board that was this fantasy guru that had all these claims of hitting, you know, 90% of his, he's done, fired. I'm doing it myself. Back to the grind, doing my own props. That's all right. Sometimes things work out. Sometimes they don't. It's like a bad girlfriend, you know. There's certain parts of it that are good, but there's other parts of it that are really bad. You know, sometimes you got to let go. You know, you got to start anew. You know, that's what we're going to do with our NFL prop. Uh, that's why I didn't put out any out on Monday. After Sunday, I said, boom, gone. Not going to work. This isn't working. Don't work. You know, I don't procrastinate when it comes to bankrolls, especially when I'm responsible for other people's, you know. Or have a large responsibility in them. I take that very seriously. I'm not some guy throwing picks up against the wall and see if they stick. You know, just for craps and giggles. So, yeah. Doc Sports. Free 60 bucks. Link in the description below. There's a tab on the website. We will give you a free $60 if you've never been a member. Comes with a profit guarantee and absolutely zero strings or hassles. Been around 53 years for a reason. There's so much information over there that's free. It'll make your head spin. Get over there and check it out. Bunch of other great handicappers as well. Daily videos coming your way. The Gridiron Six Pack will be up on Thursday. I don't think we had a winning week. They're rare. Maybe it went three and three. I'll have to double check that. We'll know for the show. Myself and Griffin, we were nine and three heading into last week. Um, and we were 68% last year. We break down three college and three NFL games. It's up here on Doc Sports' YouTube page every Thursday. Be sure and check it out. Uh, let's get after them this week in the NFL, and I will tell you guys out there, 
My college, we hit a six-unit play, but that's all we did. It's going to be a good week in college. Guarantee it. Be ready. All picks out Thursday, ready to go.